Before starting this video, I do want to give a shout out to my patrons that support the channel. And if you'd like to support the channel, there are some great benefits for you if you want to look at the Patreon link down below. So with that out of the way, let's get into this week's video. What's going on YouTube? This is Devin coming back at you with another video today on Pub Slump MTG. Glad to have you here. Today we're going to be looking at Elish Norn. This is a great commander, especially for Mono White. It does have Vigilance, and when a source an opponent controls deals damage to you or a permanent you control, that source's controller loses 2 life unless they pay 1. Then you can pay 3, sacrifice 3 other creatures to make it into the Arch of Etchings into the backside with this saga. For the first lore chapter, you incubate 2 5 times, then transform all incubator tokens you control for chapter 2 creatures you control get plus one plus one and gain double strike until end of turn then for chapter 3 you destroy all permanents except for artifacts lands or phyrexians then exile the argent etchings and flip it back into elish norn so of course this version of elish norn is all about creatures and having a lot of different creatures on the battlefield mainly phyrexians mainly because you don't want to destroy your own permanents this is an excellent commander for that go wide strategy so we're going to take advantage of that in many different ways and of course we're going phyrexian tribal this is definitely a phyrexian tribal tribal deck, especially when we're utilizing all of Elish Norn's abilities. So of course we want to focus on going wide, so we'd have a lot of different options of doing that. So the first thing I thought about was Incubate. Since we're transforming Elish Norn into that Saga side, we could actually transform all our Incubator tokens into creatures. So we do have other options like Essence of Orthodoxy. So for 5 mana, it does have flying, and when it enters the battlefield, or another Phyrexian enters the battlefield, you Incubate 2. So something interesting about this card that I didn't really think about before tokens and non-tokens that are Phyrexians that enter the battlefield under your control will make another incubate token. So you can definitely increase the production rate of your incubator tokens. Another way we could do that is by having Progenitor Exarch. So when this creature enters the battlefield, incubate 3 X times. And of course it depends on how much you pay into that X for this creature, but we could incubate a lot out of this creature. And on top of that you could tap a transform target incubator token you control. So we don't just have to rely on Elish Thorn's ability to transform all the incubator tokens. We have this way as well. Also we do have Exus the Imperfect. Exile target non-land permanent, its controller incubate X where X is the mana value. You could use this defensively to exile somebody's permanent that's a threat on the board or you could actually use it offensively if you have a useless permanent on the battlefield you could exile it to make an incubator token equal to its mana value. But if we do want to exile everything we do have Sunfall for 5 mana, exile all creatures, incubate X where X is the number of creatures exiled this way. Absolutely an excellent board wipe in this deck especially when we want to make Phyrexians on the battlefield and we'll make some incubator tokens on that as well with sunfall but incubator tokens are not the only tokens we are making we are also making mites the biggest reason why i wanted to include mites as well is because we could overwhelm our opponents with a lot of different mites on the battlefield for example we do have screlves hive at the beginning of your upkeep you lose one life and you create one one colorless phyrexian mite artifact creature token with toxic and this creature can't block and if your opponents have three or more poison counters creatures you control with toxic have lifelink simply by making 1-1 one, one Mike creature tokens will definitely overwhelm our opponents so this is a great way to do that. Also another way we could do that is by having another board wipe in our deck with White Sun's Twilight. You can pay X into the spell where you gain X life, create X 1-1 one, one colorless Mike creature tokens with Toxic 1 and if X is 5 or more you destroy all other creatures. So this is a great token generator, you'll get some life and on top of that you'll destroy all other creatures if you pay 5 or more into it. This is just providing great value overall, what's not to like about this card? But of course we do have to have the king of the mites with Skrelv defector might for one mana it does have toxic one and a camp block you pay phyrexian mana into it and tap it choose a color another target creature you control against toxic one and hexproof from a color until end of turn it can't be blocked by creatures of that color this turn this is actually just pretty great if we want to save one of our other creatures like our commander or some other big threats on the battlefield we could definitely do that with Skrelv. absolutely what a great guard right here since we do have a lot of tokens on the board we might as well include my overseer for four mana it does have first strike and as long as it's your turn creature tokens you control get plus one plus zero oh, and have first strike so that does include your might tokens that also includes your incubator tokens as well plus you can pay three and a phyrexian mana to create a one one colorless might token as well
well. So this is providing great value. I definitely want to have this in here, especially when our creatures are going to get first strike and plus one, plus zero. Oh. There's going to be a lot of tokens in this deck, so this is a great include for sure. I do want to take a step back. Let's also focus on some Phyrexian synergy. Of course, this is a Phyrexian tribal deck. Elish Norn is leading the way against the multiverse. So of course, the first card I did think about was Norn's Choir Master for five mana. We do have flying and first strike. Whenever a commander you control enters the battlefield or attacks, you proliferate. Because our incubator tokens enter with 1-1 counters, we could proliferate them to make them even bigger. Plus, if we flip back and forth with Elish Norn into the saga, it's going to enter the battlefield fresh new because it exiles it and then returns it back onto the battlefield as Elish Norn so that we could get a lot of value out of proliferating with this card. Also on top of that, I did also want to add in another card with Volpine Harvester for 4 mana. Whenever one or more Phyrexians you control attack, return target artifact card from your graveyard to the battlefield if its mana value is less than equal to their total power. So this is just great if we want to return some artifacts to the battlefield. On top of that, I also did want to add in Filigree Vector. When it does enter the battlefield, you can put 1-1 counters on each of any number of target creatures and a charge counter on each of any number of artifacts. And also on top of that, it provides a great sack outlet. You can pay 1 and tap it, sacrifice another artifact, you proliferate. So we could easily sacrifice one of our smaller versions of our incubator tokens so that we can make our other incubator tokens even larger. So this definitely does a great job at that. And on top of that, if we want to make a lot of tokens, we do have Mondrak Glory Dominus. Nothing can be said more about this card. It's a great token doubler. We definitely want to add this in here with the amount of tokens we are making on the board. I do also want to talk about some benefits of making a large army. We definitely want to make sure we get a lot of value out of making a lot of different creature tokens. So the first cards I actually did think about were some card draw enablers like Welcoming Vampire, Mentor of the Meek, and Tokasa's Welcome. We do have a lot of tokens that have power 2 or less or 3 or less, so that when they enter the battlefield, we can get some card draw. That's absolutely perfect, especially because we are in white. I know card draw has been getting better and better with white, but I do feel like if we are going in a token theme, we must include these as well. Speaking of which, if we're making a lot of tokens, Benny Brax, Zoologist, is absolutely perfect in here. It does have Convoke, and at the beginning of each end step, if you created a token this turn, you draw a card. This is just another great, efficient way where we can draw some cards out of the tokens we produce. We do also have Norn's Wellspring. This is a great artifact to have in the deck. Whenever a creature you control dies, you scry one, then put an oil counter on Norn's Wellspring, and you can pay one and tap it, remove two oil counters from Norn's Wellspring, you draw a card. Honestly, whenever a creature you control dies, you scry one. That's actually pretty great by itself. Uh, there's a lot of ways where we can make our creatures die so that we could scry a ton, and on top of that, we could get some card draw. What a great value play. On top of that, we do want a way where we could end the game. Of course, we want to win the Phyrexian way by invading the multiverse. There's a lot of different ways we could do that. The first one I did think about is because we are going to go wide strategy. We definitely want to focus on taking advantage of that by having Halo Fountain. For win con in white, this is absolutely excellent. If you pay five, you can untap 15 tapped creatures. You control it. You can win the game. So of course, we're going to have a lot of different ways we could do that. On top of that, it does provide some card draw as long as you untap two tapped creatures you control. I know it's a little sacrilegious because Halo and Phyrexian Oil do not mix. Halo actually destroys Phyrexian Oil but of course we're corrupting it for our own way to win the game. Also, since a lot of our creatures are entering the battlefield, we might as well include Cathar's Crusade. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, you can put a 1-1 counter on each creature you control. Unfortunately, they won't work with our incubator token, but we'll have a lot of my tokens on the battlefield where we can get a lot of value out of this. We can have a large army and on top of that, make them even bigger with this spell. Absolutely perfect. And of course, we have to have Mommy on the battlefield to finish the game with Elish Norn Grand Cenobite for 7 mana. It does have vision and other creatures you control get plus two plus two creatures your opponents control get minus two minus two it's funny how simple this card is but how effective it is we can make our fights into three threes and if somebody has a three three on the battlefield they'll turn into a one one this is absolutely insane the more i think about this card especially in a go wide strategy the more i could really close out games However, that's going to do it for me, guys. Thank you guys so much for coming by and watching this video on Elish Norn and their backside with the Argent Etchings. This is a pretty powerful version of Elish Norn, more of a commander than the other two, in my opinion. This has a lot of great value going for it. If I had to pick which Elish Norn to pick as a uh, commander, I would definitely pick this one out of the rest. Also, on a side note, I never knew this about Elish Norn, but I don't know if you saw the trailer for March of the Machine, but I saw the backside of Elish Norn's head. I never thought I would be so disturbed by this. Yeah. <laughs>
So since I got scarred by that, you get to be scarred by that too. However, let me know down below what are your thoughts about this new version of Elishnorn? Which one is your personal favorite? I'm kind of leaning towards more of this because it provides a lot more value plays compared to just static abilities. So make sure to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And with that out of the way, thank you for stomping by.